Okay, so here's the, um, I guess, the software side of the process of um, taking a, a design. This is, um, I just Googled for N64 neon sign. This is one of the links that popped up, and it looks really nice. Um, you can actually buy these, but, you know, I, I wanted to make one. So first, we actually save this image, and um, I actually modify it within Inkscape, uh, which is basically like a free version of Photoshop, just, you know, very basic uh, tools and whatnot. And what I ended up doing was um, I did a uh, path and trace to bitmap. And um, that will basically pop up a prompt here that allows you to um, um, do edge detection. So I can take that color image and generate just the lines. Um, so that's exactly what I did here. And um, this is where all the lights have to be. And I put red dots, I drew red circles for where uh, there needs to be holes for the EL wire to poke through, and the blue ones are mounts. So if I look very closely here, those are where little pegs have to be to bend the, the wire around. And uh, once I get this, I can export this as a DXF. And from the DXF, I can import it uh, within SolidWorks. And from here, you can actually see um, the original sketch with all those dots. And from that, I actually extrude the 3D structure which you can see here. So here's the uh, the layer sketch. You can see it's kind of pretty crude. I um, minimize the number of dots um, that actually make up the drawing itself. So it's pretty rough around the edges. We'll smooth that out later. Uh, so if I exit this, I did a, uh, a boss extrude to create the 3D shape. And from there, we, um, we individually draw the holes. Um, we cut those out. And I extrude the, um, the little bits, the pegs, um, that have to stick out. And um, you can get a closer look here. Um, the wire wraps around these guys, uh, and that forms the shape um, without having to, like, rigorously anchor the wire down. I was originally going to actually have, like, a half circle cut out where the wire can kind of fit in uh, via friction. But that just seemed like it'd be a lot of extra work and... Um, Seemed kind of unnecessary, so I opted not to do that. Ready to send this off to be 3D printed, generate the STL file. And here in Cura, I actually can um, um, import it. And um, yeah, it's all ready to go. I uh, have a glass sheet on my print bed that I uh, use binder clips to clip on. And I actually have to fit this on um, right in the center, kind of in this position, because the glass is not wide enough to do it horizontally. But um, this is all, all in all, it just barely fits. If I made it any larger, it wouldn't fit on my glass sheet because I want that perfectly smooth bottom that's easy to pull off. This would be difficult to uh, pull off just on printer's tape. Uh, you can see here, uh, two hours, 45 minutes, um, going to take around 26 grams and that's at 20% infill, uh, which is plenty strong enough. But yeah, uh, let's go into this. Um, there is one caveat I'd notice after printing. Um, the holes that I made for the wires are just a tad bit uh, too small. So I actually had to take a, uh, I believe it was a 3 16 uh, drill bit and um, drill each of them out to make them just a little bit wider so that the wire can comfortably fit through. Uh, so uh, one improvement to this file would be just to increase the diameter of all the hole sizes. Everything else though is uh, pretty, pretty perfect in terms of the geometry and the fit. Anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, get this printed out and uh, do a dry fitting and look into how to wire this all together. Okay, printing it took, as you can see, just under three hours. I've forgotten I printed this out at a uh, 0.1 millimeter layer height which is completely unnecessary uh, I could have done it at 0.2 and it would have you know printed out in roughly half the time anyway
Okay, so here we are all assembled. This took quite a while to do, and I'll show you in a second. You might be wondering why we're kind of sitting in the dark. I just wanted to, you know, do a quick uh, power on demo and whatnot. But let's talk first about um, the wire itself. Um, you get two meters, which is about, I think, like six feet, something like that. It's like just under $1.50 each, which is absolutely insane. The, um, the USB powered inverter, which generates a high voltage AC uh, necessary to drive the wire, uh, was like another two bucks, maybe like 250. And um, yeah, so all in all, to make this one with the four different colors um, and the USB was like 10, maybe 11 bucks with tax, something like that, uh, which is not a bad investment at all. Filament, um, probably spent like something like 25 cents on that. Um, and I'm just using a USB battery pack to uh, power it. But uh, we can do a quick power on right now. And there you go. It looks sort of... It's more vivid in real life um, than on camera. Uh, I'm sure if I could adjust the settings on my camera, I could get it to look closer. But the colors are a lot more vibrant. I, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. But yeah, you can see here... There is a, hopefully you can hear, I'm not sure if you can, a high frequency squeal. And that's sort of characteristic of the inverter um, of EL systems. They have to generate high, um, relatively high frequency, high voltage. And uh, the transformer in there, due to magneto uh, constriction, it can actually uh, resonate at the frequency that it's driven, which is usually like um, one or two kilohertz, something like that. So... You can dampen it, but it's actually not that bad um, with the current size um, inverter that I have. I believe this can drive up to 5 meters. Um, I think it said something like 1 to 5 meters. Okay, interesting. Apparently, um, it's not high enough load to keep this power supply on. This guy keeps shutting off, which is really irritating. This power supply, um, the USB, if you get a power bank that shuts off if you don't draw enough current... Um, it will shut off. Apparently the load from all these lights being on isn't enough to keep the power supply on. There just keeps shutting off. Anyway, yeah, if you have this plugged into a like a full power supply or something like that, um, like a wall one, um, you can keep this on continuously. Uh, yeah, like what I was saying, um, there's going to be some amount of squeal, but if you get far enough away from it, it's not that bad, honestly. Um, we're going to just flip it over carefully. All these wires are still exposed. I haven't found a way of mounting it or insulating it yet. This was just a proof of concept. Uh, but you can see, um, if I just plug this guy in, uh, yeah, you can see all the wires uh, poke through the plastic still glow on the other side, obviously. And um, from where I, I uh, spliced the wires, you can actually see it glows a little bit beyond that too which is actually a pretty neat effect and um, even though this is high voltage um, if you touch it you'll get a tingle basically it's not high enough current to, to kill you as long as you're a relatively healthy human being um, if you have like you know a heart condition or something like that I suppose it could do something um, or if you have a pacemaker so I, <laughs> it's just best not to touch the wires while it's active if you can help it um but other than that it's fairly harmless honestly um yeah and it looks absolutely amazing look at that it's nice and vibrant one thing that i uh, found out that i didn't realize so all these use uh the regular kind of greenish blue um there we go just shut off again all these use the, the greenish blue um, phosphor, uh, except for the yellow apparently uses a white phosphor. So if you were to actually look, you can see right there in the corner, it's uh, if you pull back the outer sleeve, which is just adding the color, you can see it glows white inside, which is, I thought pretty interesting. All the other wires um, glow, glow kind of blue green if you strip back the, uh, the colored sleeving, but yeah. Anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I will create a, um, a project log on this. I'll have the files for the frame, the 3D printed files, 
um, this, the SOLIDWORKS, so you can edit them if you want, as well as the ready-to-print file. Um, I'll have a write-up on information where to get the parts, um, how to, you know, do the splicing, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, yeah, so if you guys are interested, you can head over to the project page, which I will link down below in the description once I've written that up. Uh, but for now, I want to actually make more of these. Um, I want to figure out more designs and stuff like that. That would be really cool to see. So, yeah, first off, I'm going to need to get a better power brick that I can power everything off of um, that won't keep shutting off. Um, preferably one with, like, an actual physical power switch or something that you can manually switch on and off. And this will make a perfect uh, sort of nightlight. It gives a really good uh, neon effect, actually. Just reset that. Um, it really does look pretty neon -y. Um so I'm pretty happy with that. Doesn't the um, the sharp bends don't really work out that great um, because the wire is kind of just a little bit too thick and inflexible. Uh, but all in all, um, definitely is a good allusion to being a neon type display. Anyway, I am um, I've been rambling on for long enough, and my neighbor is apparently drilling into the wall right now as I'm trying to make a video. So I guess we'll just leave it at that. And uh, if you guys have any questions or, or ideas, uh, put them down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.